Hi, this is Robert Rapier and this is R Squared Energy TV. In this week's episode, I've got questions on butanol as an alternative fuel and about the relative abundance or lack thereof of natural gas in the United States. So first question, I've often wondered why I can't drive down to my local gas station and buy gasoline blended with butanol instead of ethanol. And the person posing the question cited some advantages that butanol has over ethanol. Uh, it's true that uh, butanol as a fuel is probably superior to ethanol in a lot of ways. It doesn't attract water to as great an extent. Uh, it can be shipped through existing pipelines. It has a higher energy uh, content per gallon. The biggest problem is that uh, butanol is a lot more expensive. Um, I used to make butanol. I worked for a company uh, that's now uh, it's been spun off a couple of times. But at the time that I worked for it, it was uh, Herxt Selenese and we made butanol. And uh, the way the petrochemical route goes for butanol is that you take propylene, which comes from the uh, petroleum industry, and then you combine it with synthesis gas, which is made from natural gas most of the time, and then you make butyraldehyde, and then you go another step and you make butanol and then purify that. Uh, the prices for butanol were always significantly more than gasoline. And the last time I checked, which has been a while, but uh, uh, it's maybe six months ago. I think butanol was selling for six or seven dollars a gallon with an energy content similar to that of gasoline. And the problem is the biological route is even more expensive than the petrochemical route. The petrochemical route put the biological route out of business. Uh, I, I've heard reports that there are some plants in China still running off the biological route, uh, but, but these, the, this route makes very, very low concentrations of butanol and there's a lot of water, and so it's very energy intensive to purify. So uh, as if butanol, you're just using it as a commodity chemical, uh, a specialty chemical, uh, let's say, uh, you could probably afford to input you know, three or four BTUs of energy to get one BTU of butanol out. If you're using it as fuel, you can't afford to do that. If you want something scalable, uh, you have to minimize those energy inputs. And so the biological process, I think, is a long ways away from uh, being viable for fuel. Uh, second question, if $100 a barrel oil shows that we're at peak oil, what does $2.50 per million BTU natural gas show? Well, first, I wouldn't say that $100 oil shows we're at peak oil. I, I think it shows that uh, there's not a lot of spare capacity in the system. And this is the scenario that I've called peak light, which over the last 10 years, uh, demand has grown faster than we've added additional capacity. And so this scenario behaves somewhat like the early uh, days of peak oil, where you, you imagine production declining, but supply is, is uh, uh, production is declining, but demand uh, is remaining strong, then you have those two colliding. Well, those two can collide even when production is growing. Uh, if demand is growing faster than production can come online, you can keep all the spare capacity uh, uh, out of the system, and which is what I think has happened, and that's why we have $100 oil. Uh, that's not to say that we may not be just around the corner from a peak, or the peak may not have already happened. Um, I don't know. I don't <clears throat> speculate on particular dates. I, I think it w will be soon, but whether it's happened in 2005 or 2008, or or still has yet to happen, uh, I don't think $100 oil tells us that. It just tells us something is going on with supply and demand. Uh, but what does $2.50 natural gas show us? Uh, I, I break with some of my colleagues here who feel like the shale gas revolution is a bit of a, a mirage and that, uh, you know, because the, the uh, oil wells deplete so quickly that it's just a matter of time before, uh, you know, all that gas is, is gone and we're going to use it up very quickly. I don't think that's what the uh, $2.50 natural gas is showing us. I think it's arguing that there are quite abundant supplies of, uh, of shale gas. And um, I, I think we will continue, I, I mean, shale gas now is responsible for something like a quarter of U.S. gas consumption. And as long as we see numbers like that, I'm going to be, uh, I, I will believe that we've got fairly ample supplies of natural gas. The other thing to point out is the shale gas revolution has not really uh, gone around the world yet. I mean, there are many, many countries that haven't, haven't used this to produce gas yet. And so when, when this, uh, and some, some countries, conventional gas is still so cheap and so easy, there's no reason to. But the shale gas, the fracking, offers hope that uh, uh, there will still be plenty of natural gas for quite some time to come. 
uh, when some of these countries, like China, is starting to, to wade into fracking. And, uh, you know, the more they can satisfy their own energy needs internally, the better it is for the, for the world market. So uh, that's all for this week's episode. Please tune in next week. Thank you.